Hey, Jennifer, you're going to have to unmute your, you got it. I thought I did. <laughs> First. So everyone will automatically be uh, muted when they enter. So just, Great. I guess, a uh, housekeeping tip could be that. Um, so I'm going to make you the host now. Great. All right, and then you see at the bottom where it says share screen. Yep. You can, you know, share screen just like on Ring Central, and mm -hmm. you can go from there. And um, so everyone starts on mute. Do they have control to unmute themselves, or can yes. we? Can I mute them if there's kind of background sound and things? Yes, you can do both. So they do have control to unmute themselves, and then you can mute them. So do you see on the right? Do you see where it says participants? Yes. So you pull up your participants tab and then you see at the bottom where it says invite, mute me, or reclaim host. What are we? In, invite or mute all, I see. Okay, that's what you see. Yep. Okay, so you can- Morning, Jennifer, it's Wanda, can you hear us? Yep, hey Wanda. All right, we're over in Creighton, thank you. Great, all right. So yeah, so then you can mute all and I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, and then I guess somebody will be monitoring, monitoring the chat box. Yes, Angela's going to do that. Um, yeah. And who else is on? I heard Wanda, you're RRHA FAY. There's an SRV WRIC editor. Yeah, they'll have to unmute themselves just in case they're talking. So it doesn't look like I can. Oh, okay. I apologies. Hold on, sorry. I'm trying to figure this out myself. Well, yeah, um, I, this is Tyler Thrasher with 8 News. I was just tuning in just to see what was going on. Oh, okay, great. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. Um, so I can just control muting folks on this side if need be. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Uh, great, thank you. And I'll rejoin by phone because we're doing the housing assessments at uh, Broad Creek. Great. <clears throat> All right, let me know if you need anything. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Good afternoon. We'll just let everyone um, give folks a minute to hop on um, and we'll get started in a couple of minutes. Everybody's placed on mute to start, but um, we'll certainly have time for questions and, and folks have the opportunity to unmute as needed. Good morning. Good morning. I'll send you a couple comments on the budget shortly after we get off. Okay, great. Good afternoon, everybody. We're just waiting for other participants to join, but we'll get started in a few minutes. Uh, everyone is on mute um, when you enter the call, but you can unmute uh, when there's time for questions if you have any.
Hey, Emily, I mean, um, Jennifer, can you say something? We're testing the volume here. Sure. Good afternoon. Can you hear us? Hopefully. Um, does that help, Wanda? Yes. Thank you. We got nope, it. No problem. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, anybody who's just joined. Uh, you are on mute as you start, but we'll open for questions and you have the ability to unmute at that point. Um, and we're just giving folks another minute or two to hop on and we'll get started. Hey Jennifer, this is Calvet. I'm here. Um, you can see the screen, but for whatever reason, the video is not showing from our end. Um, so right now I'm not sharing the presentation. Uh, so it's just the video. No, no, no. What I'm saying is I, we, I can see you. There's nobody here, it's just me. I can see you, Okay. but I can, But for whatever reason, the video is not coming through. Okay. My video is not coming through. Got it. Yeah. Okay, no problem. All right. Thank you. Good afternoon, folks who've joined. Um, we're just giving a few more participants a couple minutes to hop on to the call and we'll get started. Um, thanks so much for joining us. And uh, when you enter the call, you're on mute. Um, please stay on mute when you're not speaking, but certainly we have an opportunity for questions and allow you to unmute at that time. Thanks. So welcome everyone. Uh, hopefully those of you who are joined on a computer can see the presentation. Um, we'll go ahead and get started to our quarterly community meeting about the redevelopment of Creighton Court. Um, thanks everyone for joining. You are placed on mute um, and we'll have time for questions at the end. You can also um, enter your questions into the chat box um, if that's easier as well. Um, and I will pass it over to Stacy Daniels Faison, the director of RRHA. Um, before Stacy, hi, oh, hi sorry. everyone. Go ahead. That's all right. <laughs> um, good, um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Angela Fountain. I'm the uh, director of communications for the Richmond Redevelopment and Housing Authority. We are so excited about this meeting, about this time, we are we have a lot of good, good information to share with you all here to provide some updates. And we really wanna encourage everyone to please take advantage um, of the information that you're going to hear. Um, and if you have questions, please put those questions, um, for those of you that are online, please put those questions in the chat because we will be um, entertaining those uh, following the presentation. Um, for those that are in person, um, if you're in person at one of our in-person locations, we do ask if you have questions, give those to the um, RRHA representatives that are present there and we will also uh, entertain those. For those of you that are on the phone, 
um, we do ask, um, I believe that you all are able to, to also utilize the chat function to put your questions in, but we wanna make sure that we do answer and respond to every question uh, and we'll do that at the end. So uh, just, I wanted to, uh, to just say that uh, and, and now I'm going to turn it over to um, our interim CEO of RRHA, Ms. St Stacy Daniels Faison. Woohoo! Well, thank you for the introduction, <laughs> Ms. Fountain. I really appreciate that. Um, I just want to say welcome to everyone. Um, this is our first quarterly um, community meeting. As Angela has indicated, we are energized, we are energetic, and we are excited about this project. And I hope as you all as residents and our partners are excited as well. And as Angela indicated, the purpose of this meeting will to be provide you all updates um, on the project. Um, at this time, I would like to um, have my staff to introduce themselves, um, who are part of the Richmond Redevelopment and Housing Authority. So please don't be shy, RHA. Speak up, please. My name is Kenyatta Green. I'm the director of the Housing Choice Voucher Program and Tenant Selection Office. Cami Smith, um, Resident Services Coordinator. Good morning, Hi. Brett Brooks, Program Manager in Resident Services. Good morning, Controller. Uh, good morning, Eliza Stokes, our Resident Service Program Manager. Good afternoon, Andrea Adams, Communication Specialist. Good afternoon, Leandra Brown Turner. Go ahead, Tiana. I think Tiana already introduced herself. Oh, she did? Oh, okay. Yeah, she did. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Elaine. Um, I think uh, I said Elaine. Hi. Hello. Yes. Real estate development. Uh, Anyone else? Yes, it's Wanda, Daniel, Sharon Entz, and Ralph Stuckey. We're over in Creighton Court. Okay. Anyone else? Morning, Desi Winker, RHA. Well, thank you, Desi. Good afternoon. <clears throat> um, if there aren't any other RHA um, participants, um, I do want to take um, a moment to recognize um, a group that has been instrumental in, in assisting us in this effort. I like to recognize the Creighton Tenant Council. And I'd like to recognize them for their leadership, um, their insightfulness and guidance as, we've going, has, as we have gone through this process, and particularly the president of the Creighton Tenant Council, um, Ms. Oves. So, well, moving right along, um, I believe no one from the Creighton Tenant Council is on. Well, now we're going to introduce or have Juan Powell introduce the community builders. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Juan Powell, Vice President of Real Estate Development with the Community Builders. Uh, the Community Builders is a national nonprofit, affordable and mixed income uh, developer. We operate in 30 cities, largely in the Northeast, Mid-Atlantic and Midwest. Uh, we've been working in Richmond for probably seven or eight years now um, on Armstrong, obviously, as the first phase of uh, the Creighton redevelopment. And so we're, you know, elated with the progress that we've made and um, very happy to be part of the discussion today. And so I would also like to have my colleagues introduce themselves, um, starting with Jennifer. Hi, I'm Jennifer Schneider. I'm a senior project manager with TCB. I'm excited to be working with everyone on this call at um, Creighton Court. Thank you, Jennifer. And Calvet. Hi, right, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Calvet Clint. I'm with Community Builders Resident Services Coordinator. Um, I'm stationed here at Armstrong, um, but I also work with uh, those in the uh, Creighton Court community as we are um, gearing up for the next phase. And I'm excited to get to meet more of the community and um, be of assistance however I can. Great, thank you, uh, Calvet. Uh, 
Is there anyone with the city of Richmond that's part of the call today? Does that go for tenants? Like, are y'all talking about the tenants? Um, no, I'm sorry, just that our representatives of um, the city of Richmond government. Oh, I apologize. How do I mute myself back? Do I hit star six? Um, unsure. Oh my God. <laughs> That's okay, I think we're fine. Um, at this point, um, I would like to introduce Housing Opportunities Unlimited and turn it over to Chris, if I could. Thank you, Juan. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chris Jones, the Vice President of Client Relations with Housing Opportunities Unlimited. Uh, we are a relocation consulting firm that works nationwide, and I've had the pleasure uh, of working with the community builders uh, on several projects uh, over the past 10 years. Uh, specifically, this project being in my hometown of Richmond, Virginia, I'm, I'm proud to be a, and excited to be a part of the process and uh, looking forward to working with all of the residents involved uh, in the transformation of Craig Park. So thank you for having me and I, I look forward to the meeting and, and the relocation process. Great. Thanks a lot, Chris. We could go to the next slide, I believe. So we really wanted to start our quarterly meeting with providing an update on what's been going on over the last really few months. One of the main things that we focused a lot on is completing what we call the master plan. And think of the master plan as really the roadmap for the redevelopment of Creighton Court. And it outlines um, where the streets will be, where the parks will be, where the housing will be, and just um, really puts that into a plan that serves as this guidance with some level of flexibility on how the um, community will start to unfold over time. And so we've had just a great deal of participation from the Creighton residents in the fall um, of last year to get input into this planning effort, gotten input on housing styles, housing types, um, park locations, recreational needs, and all of those have been, um, all of that's been mapped into our planning process, which has resulted in the master plan document, which is now complete. And so it's part of the process to move forward with creating the new development on Creighton Court. One of the next components is what's called the zoning process. And the zoning is a government process whereby the government of Richmond city government gives approval to build the project in accordance with a plan. And so using the input from the community um, putting that into the master plan, we've submitted documents to the city of Richmond and it's called the community unit plan or CUP is the abbreviation. And so we've gotten that process started. And so that really is the first major step to move forward relative to city approval of the um, plan for the Creighton redevelopment. And certainly we've gotten input from the city of Richmond government uh, throughout the process, but this is really more of a next step toward that approval. One of the questions that we often get to any type of forums um, with residents, with the community, with other stakeholders is what's the schedule for the project? And so what we want to go through now is our plan um, you know, for the timeline for the project. One of the first items that we're gonna do, and um, Chris will actually come back in a few minutes uh, to speak, but um, is what we call the resident assessments. And that's um, starting uh, very soon um, this quarter whereby Chris and his team will go, uh, go out 
and really speak with residents who are part of phase one. And I know everyone is not able to see the graphics that are being shared because you're on the phone, but phase one really is the part, it's about a third of Creighton Court. And it's the component that really is adjacent to nine mile road. And so think of um, most of the um, housing units that are close to nine mile road as phase one. And so our assessment really is gonna start very quickly with um, what we're calling the phase one um, households. The next component, once we get through the assessment is um, between spring and summer of this year, we are going to start with the resident relocation process. And so the residents that are part of phase one are being relocated. And that's really a function of the assessment to better understand where the residents would like to live. And so with that input, then the relocation process will begin at the middle part of this year. After the, the relocation process has been completed, in the fall of this year, we're gonna move into demolition. And again, this is just phase one, is the housing units that are adjacent to Nine Mile Road. And so that work begins uh, later in the fall. In beginning of next year is when we're gonna plan what we call the infrastructure construction. Um, what's happening here is uh, as part of this work, we're creating new roadways um, with streets, alleys, street trees, street signs, and also utilities, meaning how the stormwater uh, system works, how the sanitary sewer, how the electricity, how the plumbing, all of that is gonna be new. And so it requires a certain amount of new infrastructure which is very extensive. And so once we finish the demolition, then the next phase will be the infrastructure to put in streets, alleys, um, utilities, street lights, and the like. And then also in, and this again is about a year from now is when that would start. And also in 2022 is when we plan to start the first phase of new housing that will be on the site. And so our goal is to have a little over a year from now, a year and a half, somewhere in that range, actual new construction of housing units on the current Creighton site. Again, this is gonna be a component of what we're calling phase one, which is adjacent to Nine Mile Road. And then by the mid, mid part of 2023, is when we would have completed the first component of construction. And so at that stage is when we would plan on residents actually being able to move into new homes at Creighton, at the redeveloped Creighton Court. And so just to kind of summarize, uh, winter uh, 2021, which is meaning now uh, very soon, we're gonna do the assessments. Spring, summer 2021, we're gonna start with the resident relocations related to phase one, nine mile road. Fall 2021, we're going to start with the demolition of these initial housing units. 2022, we're gonna start installing the infrastructure for the streets, alleys, and utilities. 2022, we're also gonna start construction of the new homes on part of the site. And then in 2023, we'll be able to have residents start to move into their new homes for the first built out area of the redeveloped Creighton Court. And if we could go to the next one. And so the first, again, just, I know that everyone's not able to see the slides, but in order to create the first phase we go through a process um, with Virginia Housing, which is the entity that provides tax credits. And these uh, affordable housing units are funded via a component called um, low-income housing tax credits. 
And so, but those are, the first step is an application. So we're gonna make an application in March of this year um, for this first phase. It's gonna represent 68 new homes, um, the style of which is gonna be very similar to the homes that are in Armstrong, um, for those familiar with that. And so very similar kind of same size and density and that application will go in to Virginia Housing in March of this year so that we would be in a position to start on the first phase of construction roughly a year from that point. So I'd like to turn it over to Chris Jones if I could. Yes, thanks again, Juan. So we understand with all of the exciting activity uh, that will take place uh, pretty soon in Creighton, uh, that there, there are some things that need to happen in order for the construction uh, to commence. And, and a huge part of this process is the resident uh, relocation process. And so we understand that relocation in general has the potential uh, to be you know, pretty overwhelming, but uh, the main reason why uh, HOU my group is here is to ensure that this process is as stressless as possible for each and every resident. Uh, so here pretty soon, uh, my team, along with uh, some representatives of uh, our HA, will be reaching out to phase one uh, households and completing a resident assessment survey. This is a, a very general survey that we, we conduct to, uh, to gather some household data and information uh, so that we have everything that we need to make sure that the relocation process uh, is smooth. And so we will be asking very general questions about household composition, uh, current job status, schools of your children, uh, where you would like to move, what your relocation options are. Uh, we understand that the relocation process in general has to happen for all residents, but every household is very different. So we wanna make sure that our individual assessments addresses your individual needs as a family in the household. Uh, so in the coming weeks, we will be giving out some written uh, correspondence about when our team will be on site. Uh, we will try our best to meet everyone at their preferred location, uh, whether it be a centralized location, uh, maybe your home. Uh, we will be practicing all of the safety protocols that are in place uh, due to the current pandemic, but we want to make sure that we make um, any accommodations we need necessary uh, to make sure that we are getting in contact with all of you all. So, uh, you know, just look out for myself. Uh, and my team members to be reaching out to all of the phase one households here in the coming weeks. Uh, the resident assessment survey should take anywhere from, you know, 15 to 25 minutes just based on the information presented. Uh, I do have a flyer with HOU's information. So uh, in the interim, if you all have any uh, questions in particular, please uh, feel free to reach out to us uh, and, and hopefully we can have that information distributed so, uh, in the near future. But uh, feel free to reach out. I'm, I, like I said, I'm just excited as you are, uh, you all are to have this process started, you know, being as you know, Richmond is my hometown, born and raised. So I'm happy to see this type of transformation happening uh, in our city and our community. So looking forward to meeting with each and every one of you all and um, I'll have my contact information so you all can start reaching out if you have any questions. All right, thank you so much, Chris and, and Juan and Stacy. Um, I understand uh, that JJ Minor from, uh, from the city of Richmond is, um, has joined uh, at the Armstrong Renaissance. I don't know, um, he's, he's there with uh, uh, Calvet. Um, did, did JJ want to, um, to say anything on behalf of the city? Hello to all, I hope all is well and happy new year. Just want to say uh, thank you for having me. Thank you for uh, uh, all of us joining online and we're moving forward in the right direction. And on behalf of the city of Richmond, welcome and we just want to move forward and make and get things going. That's all we need to do. Thank you so much. Thank you, Angela. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, JJ. Um, so ongoing communication. This is how we are going to be reaching out uh, to all of our uh, Creighton community members to make sure that you stay updated, to make sure that you're getting the information about uh, relocation, about the transformation. Um, 
Um, I think we need we need Calvet to uh, to mute, please. If she All right. Um, so yeah. So we're gonna re we're gonna reach out, reach out. We're gonna over communicate about exactly what's going on. Um, so and we have several platforms that hopefully will be um, at you know. One way or the other, we're gonna get the word out to you. So we have a quarterly newsletter that is actually going to begin uh, following this community meeting with all of the updates and things to come. Um, that's going to be sent out uh, via, a, um, via the new website, which is also um, in construction, uh, but it's gonna be sent out, it's gonna be posted on the website, but it's also going to be distributed to each um, Creighton uh, unit so that you all can, can have that information in hand. Uh, we are also going to continue with our, uh, with our quarterly community meetings. And uh, we're gonna strive to make sure that we, that we give you options as, it, as we did with this one. Um, if, if at all possible, we are gonna give you an option to attend in person. Um, also on, virtually online as we are now, as well as over the phone. Uh, so we wanna make all of those opportunities available for you um, to meet. Uh, to hear the updates in person. Um, as I indicated, uh, there is a website, a dedicated website for the Creighton relocation uh, under construction. And so as soon as we have that information, we will um, make sure to get it out to all of our constituents, not only our, um, not only and definitely our uh, Creighton Creighton family members, but also our stakeholders uh, and partners. Um, we also have a, a dedicated information line. It's a telephone information line. So you can actually call that number 780-4343 and, and get updates um, over the phone. You can't leave a message on this line. It is basically just an information line that will tell you, um, give you status updates about where we are and upcoming meetings and things like that. Um, we have created an uh, a email if you want to um, reach out via email, you can contact us at creightonredevelopment at gmail.com. That's Creighton Redevelopment. That's all one word all spelled out at gmail.com for those of you that um, are, are, you know, are not able to see the screen. And responses will be provided if you, if you send us an email within 48 business hours. So we wanted to um, just make, again, a variety of platforms um, available so that we make sure that you all are getting the information that you want, getting the information that you need, being able to reach us and ask questions. Um, we, um, as, H, uh, as Chris said, with um, HOU, we'll be taking, we'll take that information and post it to our, um, to our website, uh, to our social media platforms. Um, so you will have all of that information. I, I am going to ask also um, for Chris, uh, if you would go ahead and put your information as well in the chat uh, so that they'll have that. Um, and then if there's nothing further, we will move on to, um, to questions. And I think I have, I've also, uh, some folks have al already started entering some questions. So I'm gonna go to the chat first um, to just kind of faci to facilitate this part of, of our meeting. Um, I'm gonna go to the chat and then I'm also gonna kind of toggle back and forth with, uh, those that are in person at the Creighton Recreation Center. Um, and then also if you're unable to put uh, messaging in the chat, we'll, we'll also uh, make an opportunity available for you to, um, to ask your question. So uh, to, to start us off, what type of assistance will residents be provided in terms of moving? Will, will we pack ourselves and will we have to pay for the service? And I'm not sure who that question should go to. Maybe Chris, maybe um, the TCB team. Uh, we, we can't hear you, Chris, if you speak. Are you all able to hear me now? Yes, we are. Okay, great. So that is a great question. Um, residents will receive uh, packing and moving assistance. Chris, you're really, really low. I'm not sure if everybody else is getting the same thing that I'm getting. But you're. Yeah. Um, let's see. Give me one second. 
do that. Okay, well, let's do this. Let's, um, I'm gonna move on to the next question um, and, and maybe um, Chris can see if there's uh, maybe some, he can allay those technical difficulties on his <laughs> end. Um, another question here, will residents be able to use tenant protection vouchers out of city, out of the city or state because the area is saturated with vouchers and not enough housing options that accept vouchers? Um, I'm not sure, oh, Desi, I see, I see but, light yeah. up. <laughs> Good question. Um, I would refer to um, our housing choice voucher specialist. I'm not sure if he's on the line right now. Uh, if it can go beyond the boundaries of the city of Richmond. But good question. Um, if we don't have the answer today, we'll definitely get back to you with that. Um, just to make sure that we have that, that question answered. Okay. All righty. Um, another question uh, in the chat. Can you tell us what phase two looks like and what the timeline may, might be? Um, I know we did go over the timeline, but I guess um, Juan, if you want to do like a, a quick recap of that. that. Yes. And so the, the timeline that we identified really is related to phase one. And so, and, you know, there are a number of variables that relate to phase two, including HUD approvals, um, you know, that, you know, really are key, but you know, we'll have to work through that, but just as a, a general framework, if we're able to uh, move forward with resident relocation on phase one and spring or summer of 2021, then we hope that we'd be in a position to have the phase two approximately a year later. And so we're still, um, still working on timing for phase two again, Part of that is incumbent upon uh, HUD approvals, but once we have a little bit more clarity on the pace of that, then we will be able to update the schedule for phase two. But I'd love to be in a position where um, phase two can start a year after phase one. Okay. Um, Angela, may I interject uh, just for a second, answer sure. the previous question. Um, I think when Chris comes back, I think that was a two part question in essence, they were talking about capacity mm -hmm. um, and resources for the families, but they were also talking about relocation expenses. I can talk about part B to that question, which is the relocation expenses in which any residents in phase one with, an with the application being approved do not incur any um, cost for relocation. Uh, that is what the housing authority will pay for. Um, so no out, of pocket, no out of pocket expenses for any families that will be relocated um, in the Creighton Court transition. And we will yes. also provide um, packing assistance um, and that will be basically on a one-on-one -on -one assessment to see what your preference is in terms of how you would like to be moved, if you want to move by yourself or if you'd like some assistance moving. I, I see Chris now has his audio okay. working very well. <laughs> <laughs> We also, can hear you and, and, and you can answer the, uh, the, the part A of that question. Yes, yes, absolutely. So uh, Desi, you, you're, you're correct. Our one-on-one -on -one assessments will identify uh, as a resident, your preference in terms of moving uh, assistance. Uh, there, there are a couple of options uh, that you all may have. Um, um, Desi is correct when he says you will not incur any additional out-of-pocket expenses. If you choose to move yourself under your own terms, uh, you'll be reimbursed uh, for those expenses. So there won't be any additional expenses uh, as a result of relocation. And so these are some of the questions that we will go through uh, in thorough detail when we meet with you all here pretty soon, uh, just to identify your needs and your preferences when preparing to actually relocate. Um, there are also several options in terms of where you would relocate to and how that relocation will happen. In terms of the tenant protection vouchers that were uh, mentioned earlier, um, if the interest is to stay at the Creighton Court development, um, there, there is a possibility to run that route as well. So we will get into details with all of those avenues uh, and possibilities when we meet with you all in a couple of weeks. And uh, my team, along with representatives from RRHA, will have some very detailed information on how that process will work for you. Right. 
Thank you so much, Chris uh, and Desi. Um, oh, I see uh, Sam Patterson from uh, uh, Councilwoman Newbill's office is on the line. Sam, did you wanna say anything or? Can't hear you, Sam. Can't hear you, Sam. Okay. We're not able, we're not, Sam, we're not able to hear you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have to come back. Okay, all right. Well, um, those are the questions. Those are, we've exhausted the questions uh, thus far that are in the chat, but so I wanted to open it up uh, to, to those that are on the line, the, um, the Creighton families that are on the line that may have some questions. Uh, are there, are there any um, any families that want to um, to ask a question? Angela, this is Wanda in Creighton. Yes, ma'am. A resident had a question about relocation. She wants okay. to know if she would have to pay the additional two hundred dollar deposit if we relocate her temporarily to another unit. Will she? Okay. So the question is: Would um, would the family have to pay? an additional $200 deposit, $200 deposit if she's, right. if, if they're relocated to the temporary, right. If they're moving from one unit in Creighton to another unit in Creighton, would they have to incur that $200 deposit? That's the way it is right now. Okay. Um, who do we have that can respond to that? Well, with relocation, I get no out of pocket expenses for the families. So all out-of-pocket expenses for the families will be paid for. So yes, uh, the $200 deposit will be paid for in the relocation process. All right, great. Um, are there any other, Wanda, any more questions on your end uh, from, the, from the folks there at the uh, Creighton Recreation Center? Yes, hold on a minute, I'm getting that right now. Okay. While Wanda is getting that, are there any um, folks that are on the call uh, that are on, on their phones that might want to ask a question? If so, you would just have to uh, un unmute yourself and, um, and then proceed with your question. Angela, it was a, a question about moving, so I was able to answer that question here. Okay. All right. Well, um, Sam, have you um, gotten your, your audio together there? No. <laughs> Still can't hear you. <laughs> Okay, all right, well, let's see. Um, uh, what was that, go ahead. I'm sorry, hi, my name is Chloe Johnson. I'm a tenant of uh, Creighton Court. Yes, Ms. Johnson. I wanted to know, um, okay, I filled out the, this was a while back, um, and that the lady at the rental office had helped me out, and I can't remember what site it is to go to to check my status. Um, of my applications for the uh, waiting list of the apartments. Okay, um, I know that we have Miss uh, Green on the line. I'm not sure if that's a question she can answer. Um, Kenyatta, is that something you're you're able to to address right now? Yeah, yeah, sure. So I just want to make sure that I'm understanding what it is you are asking. You apply for a different wait list and you want to check the status of your application? Well, I can't remember exactly which. It was for the new apartments for the current. You know, I was wondering if it was a wait list for the housing trust voucher program or is it a wait list for another apartment? Another apart, not in creating the new apartments. Is this, I'm sure. So it's a project based, probably a project based wait list. One of the wait lists that open. No, I'm already in a project. No, no, no. So when I say project based, so like, um, was it at Alexander at 1090? Was it at Armstrong? 
Kings Ridge, one of those yeah, um, units. Yeah, those ones, yeah. Okay, okay. So um, you can you have access to check the status of your application through the applicant portal, which is located on RRHA's website. So if okay. you access RHA's website and just click as a resident, you want to click resident portal at the top of the screen, and then you log in. You can check the status of your application. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. All righty. Um, are there any more questions? Going yes, on. I have a question. Oh, yes, yes, ma'am. I, I, um, I want to know when they're going to come out to do the assessment, to so talk to us about um, re, um, relocating for the phase one, the people that's like in phase one. Chris, is that you? Yes. So okay. we are finalizing as a group uh, between HOU and RHA, finalizing some dates that will work for all parties involved uh, to give you a general uh, data when you can expect to start to see us. Uh, I would imagine we would be on site uh, maybe the week of February, uh, February 8th. Uh, could, we could be as early as February 8th. Um, but once we uh, lock those dates down, we will be sure to send out some correspondence and post on the website and such uh, the dates and times where we were available. Uh, we will also uh, identify ourselves as HOU with names and ID badges so you know you're talking to the right people uh, uh, to make sure that you all understand that you know it, it is HOU that you're speaking with. So we'll, we'll make sure all that information is available prior to our start of relocation assessment. Okay, okay. that's that's what I wanted to know because I'll, I'll be talking to whoever come and visit me with all these issues that I'm having. I need to be like one of the first people that move ASAP. Well, enter your meeting followed by pound. Okay, well, we'll be sure to, to reach out to, to all residents in phase one, but we'll, we'll definitely get in contact with you. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. Um, are there any more questions? It looks um, like there's another question in the chat. Oh, okay. Um, but Is I'm that, not sure about uh, moving to apartments on the waiting list. Uh, so the question is, it says, will we be moving to apartments on the waiting list or to phase two or three? Uh, saying yeah. apartments like Kings Ridge or Armstrong Renaissance. So I'm, I'm, I'm let, so me I, make sure, let me make sure that I understand the question. Um, the question is, is, is being asked if those that are on, that are in, that are currently current residents in Creighton, will they be moving to apartments that are on the waiting list or to those that are in Kings Ridge or Armstrong Renaissance? Is that correct? I think this, I'm sorry, this is Kenyatta again. I think mm -hmm. what um, she's asking is um, as part of relocation, um, can they move to Kings Ridge um, as their relocated unit? Is that is that right? Whoever asked the question, is that what you're asking? It's it's a chat question. Okay, I do. But um, Kenya, she is said yes. I, I yes. do believe that's what they're asking. She said yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So um, when when. While using PBVs as the as a relocated unit, it's it's going to be based off of the vacancies in that particular um, development. Um, while Creighton Court residents do have preference in those units, um, we can um, cannot guarantee that there will be a vacant unit that we can relocate you to in in those developments. Um, we will exhaust all possibilities when um, doing your assessment and what is available at that time, but we can't guarantee that you'll be able to relocate to one of the PPV units. Okay. Um, thank you, Kenyatta. Uh, do we know, uh, do we have a ETA as it relates to the development of the website? Um, so it's it's under uh, review right now, but I don't have a firm date for completion. Okay. Um, I saw someone uh, someone's phone light up. Did they? Is there another question? Okay. 
Well, going once, going twice. All right, well, thank you all uh, for, again, your participation. Thank you for your time. Um, I hope that this was um, informative. I hope, uh, again, if you, if you think of a question, if you go away and say, oh, I should have asked this. Um, again, we have the website there that, um, not, not, excuse me, not the website, but we have the, um, the email ad uh, address, redevelopment at gmail.com that you can email. Um, you can also, um, for updates, again, call the 780-4343 uh, information line um, to, um, to, to, just, to just listen to what, what's going on. We really appreciate, again, all of you all's um, taking the time out of your schedule to, um, to, to, to come and, and take part in this, in this meeting. These are going to be quarterly, um, but we will be communicating even um, even in the interims, in between those, in, in between our quarterly meetings. All right, thank you so much. Have a great day. Thanks everyone. Thanks. Everyone. Thanks.